Hello friends, welcome back to our course Math Essential for Machine Learning and let's continue with our crash course on derivative. Let me give you one more uh, example on the chain rule and I tend to actually put uh, analogy in the with the real life whenever I have to explain uh, something complex or something not very common, right? So in this case the chain rule. So for example, um, you have a friend, okay, and you know, uh, he's mad at you, okay, and this is you, say for example, this is you, and this is your friend A, okay. So, what does it mean by derivative is, you make, and he, and this person is really, really mad at you, okay. Now, what does it mean by derivative is, so if you change your input, okay, to your friend, then you are going to see the reaction in your friend A, right? So similarly, if you change something in the input X, from X you went up to X plus H, then what is the value that has changed, right? That is means what does it F of X plus H become, right? So that means if you change your input to your friend who is m very mad and you, you know, try to make him calm, it eventually turned out that he became even more mad, right? So, uh, just a in a small analogy. Now, on the same context, if I have to uh, think about chain rule, right? This was a simple derivative, right? If you make change something to the input, you get to see how much your output has changed, right? In the chain rule, you have two entities now. So, your friend is mad at you, okay? Friend A is mad at you then what you do is you instead of giving input directly to him okay what you do you have another friend in between and so this is friend b so you give some input to this friend this friend in turn will change to certain amount okay maybe you have been very unreasonable so now he was mad okay now he is mad too right and because he is mad he has even made him more madder right made him more madder i should i would say okay makes sense so basically you are giving input to him this person this there is an outcome change here and this in turn gave input to this and now a is even more furious now okay so you better run <laughs> okay so same thing goes here so suppose this uh, if you want to see you know the change in function you know dip given by x so it can be also written as the change in function because of another function times the change in that function divided by x so okay so we can see that this and this of course i can cancel this is just an oversimplification and df dx is nothing but your f prime x okay so basically what here what i'm doing is I am taking the derivative with respect to g, another function and the derivative of g with respect to x and eventually it gives me the derivative of f with respect to x, okay. So you saw that in chain rule, we, in, you know, uh, we directly do not uh, impact the output, rather we have intermittent, sorry, uh, in between we have some more things that is happening, okay. This is a very uh, common concept and uh, uh, it is uh, heavily used in neural networks and advanced machine learning algorithm, okay. So, even in neural networks, so you will have say some output uh, say C and then you will have some weight layers in between, right. And then you will have some input layers, right. So, basically uh, whatever you change in the input, right, they all will are going to affect the output overall. So, you change here change in the input. So, you are not directly changing in changing the output, right? You are changing something in between and they in turn will change the output, okay? So, this is how the chain rule works, okay? I hope this gives you some sense uh, about the uh, chain rule, okay? So, remember uh, we had one example where we flipped 11 coins and we got 5 heads and 6 tails right and we thought that the uh, this data was created by the combination of the probability p to the power 5 
times 1 minus p to the power 6 and our intention was to find for what value of p the chance of getting 5 heads and 6 tails will be maximized and we uh, knew that if I take the derivative of this and equal to 0 then I will get the value of p for which this function is maximized basically my chance of getting 5 heads and 6 tails is maximized right. So, we can now solve this because now we are familiar with the derivative. So, this would be one example that will help you wrap up this concepts. So, we have p to the power 5 last time I have just solved it directly and who were familiar with derivative could have easily followed and this is just for the people who are who wants a refreshing course on derivative ok. So, here you can see if I have to oh, high level if I have to check then this is just a product of two functions which is p to the power 5 and 1 minus p to the power 6 this I can consider as something like x to the power n right and they are product of two factors. So, I can say the derivative is the first term itself and the derivative of the second term which is 1 minus p to the power 6 and derivative of this one plus the derivative of the first term times the second term right. With so, you can do it by yourself as well, but I will just uh, do it here for you ok. So, p to the power 5 stays as is then I have 6 times 1 minus p again consider this as a single term take the derivative. So, it will behave like x to the power n which is n of x to the power n minus 1 times because now we are going to apply the uh, product rule then I have to take the derivative of this one 1 minus p derivative ok plus the derivative of p to the power 5 is 5 times p to the power 4 and the second term remains as is ok and this can be you know some uh, simplified again and if I take the common terms. So, I can see that p to the power 4 is common ok 1 minus p to the power 5 is common ok and then if I have to put it this way and rearrange the terms I can see that it can be written as 5 minus 11 p ok and this is becomes your final expression p to the power 4 1 minus p to the power 5 and 5 minus 11 p equal to 0 and we have already done this analysis that p cannot be 0 or p cannot be 1 right because we have seen the cases of both head and tails the only thing that can be 0 is 5 minus 11 p is equal to 0 and p is nothing but your 5 over 11 and this is the probability which will maximize this function ok. So, with that we come to the uh, end of the crash course on derivative and of course, there are many other things uh, that we will cover uh, on derivative and other concept, but this is just to get you started and as and when we get uh, new things coming up uh, definitely we are going to include them and explain it there as well ok. So, I hope this gives you a good learning experience. So, please uh, stay tuned and subscribe and give, give us a thumbs up.